Let's start off with a prayer. O Heavenly King, Comforter of the Spirit of Truth, whoever will present, fill us all things, treasure your blessings, and giver of life. Come and abide in us and cleanse us from all impurities and save our souls, O good one. And now, you would like to lead us in a prayer, would you, Ken? Father, thank you that we can come before your throne and offer uh, what's in our hearts and minds uh, to you in this place that you've made for us to hear our voice. I appreciate, Father, so greatly how great you are and willing to help us in our life here on this planet. Lord, you know the pieces that you've given to me to share today, so I pray by the working of the Holy Spirit you let me speak clearly, distinctively, for the benefit of your people, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, Father Z, along with Kenneth B. Klein, you can go to kenneth.kleinproductions.net and find the various movies, including the Deep State Prophecy and The Last Trump, along with the book, as well as The Unforgettable Tree. There's a lot going on at kenkleinproductions.com. Now, I was listening to another radio no, program. No, dot .net, dot .net. Not, so you I did, did it again. Dot .net. You know, well, <laughs> dot .net, dot .net. So now everybody will know. Anyway, I was listening to the radio, and yeah. I, I heard some disturbing news. And it's about what Russia and China are up to. And it's really hard to figure out what's going on in the world stage because on one side you have Russia and a resurgence of Christianity, and on the other side you have, well, we're, we're declining in the United States. We're not what we once were. Uh, I think we've pretty much, for the most part, have uh, gone in the other direction away from God. We've given up God. We've taken foreign gods in. We've become the new Israel, as we read in the New Test in the Old Testament, um, so I'm listening to the radio, and it's another one of those Bible experts, an expert on prophecy, and it was on coast to coast, George Norrie, <laughs> and he was talking about the advanced weaponry that uh, the Russians are working on, and how we're going to all be taken out, and there's going to be about thirty thousand, thirty million people left in the United States when all is said and done. They're going to strike first in uh, cahoots with China. They have supersonic nuclear weapons, which I'm sure that they do. And I I would assume that our weapon systems are still uh, more than adequate. I I guess we're probably 10 steps ahead than what the rest of the world might think. So I'm hearing this hypersonic technology, nukes that are far better than ours, ABM system, we won't be able to respond. Uh, We don't uh, strike first. There's no mutual destruction. I'm hearing all this Horrible news from this Bible prophet uh, on coast to coast talking about how the Russians are the big evil ones now. So what in your mind, Ken, is really going on? And, and I suppose it lines up with the deep state prophecy and the last Trump. Wow. <laughs> I have that tendency of doing that, don't I? Yeah. OK, so let me start by saying this. I have very little respect for. I'm a film producer. Okay, that's what I do. Uh, But I have very little respect for these uh, people that talk about Bible prophecy, because so much of Bible prophecy has been uh, infected by heresies that have come from the Jesuit priests that created the whole concept, at least initially, of dispensationalism, which is futurism, uh, which has come to uh, came to England and then came over into our country and then landed at the Dallas Theological Seminary and was widespread by a book in 1969, 1970 called Late Great Planet Earth. That that became, uh, which was Hal Lindsey's book, famous book, 50 million copies. And that view by the Jesuits has been widespread to the body of Christ, the kingdom of God on earth, uh, with with a, a false idea of the end times, okay? So so right away, a lens has been created for uh, the body of Christ that's, that is flawed. It's totally flawed. And so people look at existence uh, on the earth, in the, in the outer world, through this flawed lens, okay? So that's, that's in, a, in a nutshell, uh, without getting into all the details of, of the error, the horrific error of it. I'm going to write a book on this eventually or do a film. I don't know yet, but but that is a problem. Jesus said this. His disciples came to him when he was on Mount of Olivet, where he was killed, by the way, and he, he they were saying, to, he said, look, this, this 
this uh, this temple's coming down, man. Every, there won't be one stone left upon another. And they couldn't believe what they were hearing from the mouth of Christ, Jesus Christ. And they said they couldn't handle it. They said, look, look at these beautiful buildings. And Lord, oh, my gosh, the temple. And he said, I got I got some bad news for you. It's all coming down. And not one stone will be left standing on another. And they could, they went away and came back and said, okay, when? When is the sign of your coming? And when will these things be? And when is the end of the age? And they're asking eschatological questions. They're talking about eschatology means the study of the last things. When are these things going to be? Tell us the future. And And he said this, don't be deceived. The, 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 he didn't answer them point blankedly, face to face. He said, don't be deceived. Many will come in my name, i.e. prophecy teachers, and, and they will lead many astray and deceive many. And so this is what I'm saying. Christ himself warned us of prophecy teachers that would come with their inclination of what would come to be. And that's all we've had for hundreds of years. That's what's happened. And the whole kingdom of God on this planet has been deceived. The very thing Jesus warned against is what's happened. It's what's happened. And so we have a flawed lens. That's why I do what I do. I'm a filmmaker, okay? I don't claim to be a prophet. I don't claim to be a pastor. Uh, I am a priest, though. I am a priest ordained by the Spirit of God. That That's my ordination. So now let's talk about this for just a second, about what's happened here. Okay, there's. We, I think we talked about this the last time we were on the air, but I want to talk about it again to emphasize something, because people go back to sleep. They just, they just back, go backwards and forget. And the next thing you know, they're listening to this kind of news on, on shows like this, this Coast to Coast. I do a Coast to Coast show. I like George. We're friends. I do his show. But he puts on a lot of people because he's got to fill up space. He's got the, It's like a newspaper. we got to have a story. got to have a story. we got all these pages to fill. Well, they've got time to fill. So they put on anybody and everybody. That's his show. That's his business. And he's going to be accountable for what he does. That's none of my, my business. I just great great I can be on from time to somehow, you know, uh, bring some light to all this nonsense. So anyway, uh, we have this heretical lens that we look through that's been propagated in Europe and in the United States for the last 300 years. And, and, and we don't know any other way to go by this. Uh, so everybody thinks, yeah, this is the way it's going to end. Now, when Jesus was standing on that mount of all of it. Uh, he also said, uh, and then in the temple, he walked into the temple, and he said to the Sanhedrin, the Jewish intelligentsia of the day, the Hebrews, uh, the Sanhedrin, uh, destroy this temple and I'll raise it in three days. And they said, this is blasphemy. It took 50 years to build this temple. You're going to raise it in three days? What a joke. And, and that was one of the reasons why they wanted to kill him, because they thought he was being a heretic. And he, of course, was redefining the temple. Okay, now I, I, just bear with me for just a minute. No, and, go and, keep and going. They, and they they didn't realize he was talking about his own body, that that it would be raised in three days from the grave. Okay, he overcame death through his his uh, his, his uh, conquest uh, through his own uh, sacrifice. So uh, he was redefining the temple. And this is the real temple. Then later we find in the epistles that. Uh, Paul says, do you not know you're the temple of God in 2 Corinthians? You know, so you better be careful how you carry yourself. And so then the, the idea of the temple now is imparted as understanding to us. We're the temple of God. When Jesus went into the temple area in the outer court, he overturned the tables and whipped the money changers, and he said, you've made my father's house a den of thieves, and and he whipped them. And we this is one of the great stories that kind of says, well, this is how God feels about desecrating the temple of God, the physical temple, okay? So now we've become the temple of God, and he's got to overthrow many things inside of us that are in contradiction to his righteousness. It doesn't make, mean that we're unsaved once we accept Jesus. It means that he's got a lot of work to do to clean up the house, which is whom we are. But he redefines the house. Then you get to Revelation 11, 
And there's a story there about the angel that comes to John. He said, take this read, measure the temple, the altar, but don't measure the outer court. Okay? Now, this temple, the physical temple, is like a living metaphor, living in the sense that we can see it, you know, uh, by when we look at the Old Testament, we can see the temple and how it was built and arrayed and adorned with all this stuff. This is, this is, the, this is a shadow of the real temple. The real temple is us and the, the throne of God in the heavens. Okay, that, that's the connection between the throne of God and us. That, that that's connection is uh, why we hear from glory, which is the heavenly temple, to us. From glory to glory, our glory, inner, our inner person being glorified or transformed. But the point is, and the important point to make, is that God says to John, or the angel says to John, do not measure the outer court because it's been given unto the Gentiles been given unto the Gentiles. Gentiles was the uncircumcised. Uncircumcised, you know, is, is, is a picture of, of the, 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 a man's genitals that had to be circumcised because of, of the, the covenant of Abraham and somebody's heart. Somebody's heart that isn't, it hasn't been, the, the fleshy part of the inner person hasn't been cut away and they can't perceive the things of God. And so the, the idea of the outer court, uh, uh, being given unto the Gentiles and trampled down by the Gentiles ha- has to do with how we should look at ourselves. Number one, we have a connection to the throne of God, which is one of my favorite topics to talk about as the place where the priests go, which is which means men and women. doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. You can go before the throne of God. The, the inner court uh, was where the p- priests hung out, okay? But the temple area is where the priests would go to make prayers and to make supplications and intercessions. And, and that we get to do by faith. We do it by our faith and, and today, to this day. But yet the outer court is being trampled down. The outer court is our body and the outer world. The outer world. That's the outer court. It's now global. It's global. So when we get news the political news or people that are trying to explain prophecy in light of the circumstances of this world, we're getting news from the outer court, the outer court that's being trampled down. So so if you watch Fox, anybody, any news agency, you're getting news from the outer court. Now, politics is kind of like the collective arm of humanity trying to fix the world. Like, good luck with that one. This world uh, has been set in a convolution called vanity. And, and, and vanity is explained in the scriptures as, as a place of temporary time. You know, Jesus said it, this light momentary affliction, well, actually it's Paul, works, for, it's a light momentary affliction on this planet. This, affl- this planet is afflicted with vanity, and you can't t- lift it. it. It cannot be lifted. The outer court's going to, and ha- has been and will be until he returns, so or returns, is afflicted with vanity, which means a, a, a vacuum. It's a vacuum. It, it's a vacuum, a spiritual vacuum. And so, obviously, the outer court's going to be trampled down by the ungodly. And, and even sometimes by men of God that mean well, that are trying to purport to us prophecy that is errant. It, it, it's not going to be fixed. Many of these things that we can't see uh, uh, are happening, but that's not the focus for us. The focus is the, the altar of God and, and the uh, uh, inner court where the priests hang out, where there's fellowship, where there's prayer. That's, that's our focus. But if we want to focus on the outer world, then we're going to have a lot of anxiety. That's and right. These guys that are saying these things are are just stirring up the anxiousness in our heart. But that shouldn't be our focus. Our focus should be on prayer. Jesus said, "My house will be a house of prayer." And how little uh, people understand this. Now, in the Old Testament, one of my favorite stories uh, that I try to share with my pastor, but he wouldn't even listen to me. Uh, was when the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of God, had been captured by the Philistines, being brought back into Jerusalem. And there's a guy standing by this cart that the Philistines put the Ark of the Covenant on, very, uh, you know, uh, um, I guess you could say uh, crude. And, and this cart 
uh, is going along, and this guy's standing by it, and it hits a chuck hole, and the and the ark gets to gets ready to tip over, and the guy puts his hands up because he had concern for the ark, and God kills him, strikes him dead right there, right there, and David, King David, is going, oh, what's up with that? This looks like the right thing to do. He's trying to walk, keep the ark from falling over, and, and uh, why did you kill him, God? And for months, David couldn't figure out why God would do something like that, and the answer was because he didn't, he wasn't a priest. He, he didn't have a linen ephod on, which was the sign of a priest. He had no right to touch the ark, should have let it fall. God's certainly able to keep it from falling if he's that concerned oh, about his yeah. own presence. That's right. And Disobeying so, God, so, not and, allowing God to do what God promises to do. And so it, 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 and, God, and, and God killed this guy, Uz, that was his name, for his irreverence. Like, where, who gives you the right to fix this or to keep it from falling? Hmm. And how often we are. Uh, uh, when we see something out of alignment, ready to put our hands uh, on that which only God should deal with, and through somebody wearing the garment of a priest. How often we use the arm of the flesh to try to fix things. And, And politics, politics is the collective arm of the flesh of humanity trying to fix the world. That's right. I mean, we can't, we can't fix the world, but we can pray. And we can go before the one who created it all called our Father. And our Father uh, is willing to hear our prayers and looking for us as his proxies to stand on this earth and declare his will, his name, his might, his authority. And that is how we deal with all this crap in the outer court. If we go and take stuff from the outer court and get all enraged and start doing this and that and the other, we'll just be creating death, because that's what happens when Uzzah puts his hand to the ark. It'll just create death. And that's not our law. That's not God's uh, inheritance for us. We are priests of God, and we, we, we should not worry about I mean, we can pray about this stuff with Russia. We can pray about this stuff with China. But to try to do something in the in, in in the political world to stop all this stuff is it, it, it's just responding to the news coming from the outer court that's where it's coming from that's not where the priests live they don't live in the outer court that's not our domain we live in the inner court and in the temple wow. that's where we hang out and, and 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 to get this message across to people is almost impossible because people are not uh, spiritually enlightened to the point where they can receive it, and they just want to look at something tangible, physical, and 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 news that disturbs them and pro- is so problematic that it it takes away their peace. Uh, Jesus said, "Peace I give unto you, peace I leave unto you, not as the world or the outer court giveth, but what I give." So, if you're looking for peace and the rectification of the problem in the world of vanity, you are are uh, deluded. You're mistaken, and all these prophecies that get us focused on the outer world will do nothing for you. Nothing. There's no spiritual value in telling me that Russia's going to kick our butts or China's going to join with them. They're going to nuke us. I say, you know, if you're going to nuke America, drop it on my house first, please. I want <laughs> out of here. This, well, is a, this is an insane asylum, and, <laughs> and I don't belong here. I, I'm not of this world. None of us I don't belong, belong here. The- None of us belong here. But I, I will tell you, now I'm ready to go play in the Super Bowl. I feel like we huddled up, and you're giving the uh, pregame speech to the guys in the huddle. I'm all psyched up. I'm I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm just uh, kidding around. You really got a lot of points across today. You gave me pretty much nothing to do, which is what disc jockeys aspire to. We don't want to really work for a living. So you did all the work. You you, you lifted all the weights today. We're talking with Ken wanna... Klein. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to say something else, uh, if, <laughs> if we have time. We have time. Go. Yeah. Well, in, in my book, not in my film, but in my book called The Deep State Prophecy and the Last Trump, the book's called by the same namesake uh, as my film, I go into the second beast of Revelation thirteen eleven called the false prophet. Now, a lot of people say, well, this is the Pope. You know, this is the blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, people uh, taking pop shots at trying to uh, uh, de-encrypt uh, the messages of these symbols that are so sad. But this second beast called the false prophet, they say, well, you know, it's, it's a man because, look, he's thrown in the lake of fire, blah, 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 blah. You know, they just they just don't see. But the point of it is that this second beast 
which has two horns, and horns are, are explained as kings or kingdoms, uh, comes along to help the finalization of the whole beast system that stretches back to the, the time of the Egyptians and threads through human history. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and then, of course, the British Empire, which I explain in my film. And then finally, there'll be an eighth that comes of the seventh, clearly the United Nations. I mean, there's no way you can get around it. It uh, has uh, the ability to pull this whole thing into place at the, at the end of, not time, but at the end of a certain period of time. Uh, and that false prophet is not a man. It's two kings or two kingdoms that come together that have three power systems. Three power systems, or three, the Bible calls, attesting miracles. And those three things are, number one, fire from heaven, or the heavens, which is military high technological capability. Right. Okay, so, so this, this false prophet has in his power uh, military high tech. Secondly, he makes an image of the first beast. Well, the first beast is what I just mentioned, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, uh, Rome, uh, England, and, the, and, and then the, uh, uh, the United Nations, which is the outer appearance of the inner nexus of this thing, which is sourced in London. It's all my book uh, and all in my film. People should get this if they want to get their lens fixed. Uh, and, and the second thing he does, he makes an image of this first beast. Well, what what do you mean it's an image? Well, people say, well, it's, an, it's a statue set up in the temple of God that they're going to rebuild in Jerusalem. Go, what nonsense. It, it has nothing to do with that, nothing to do with a statue. This, is te- this tells you that this second beast has the ability to have spiritual life, and it speaks. It has spiritual life. This, this false prophet gives it spiritual life. That's the word pneuma. He gives it life, pneuma, spirit, and, and the whole world bows down and worship it, worships this image or likeness of this, this symbolism that explains this network of kingdoms that have come along for thousands of years. Well, what could it possibly be? Well, it can only be one thing, and that's the media. The media is what people worship, and they bow down. I mean, proskuneo means, is the word for worship. And they and they, so they bow their knee to it. And this is what people are indoctrinated by, the media, which is an image of the beast, the whole system. And the whole world is falling down to the image of the beast. I mean, what could be more obvious than the media being so demonic and, and lying? I mean, it's becoming more and more uh, obvious every day for those that want to see it. And then the last thing it creates is a whole world economic system based upon a a number called 666. It's all explained in my book. These are the three power systems or miracles of this false prophet. In my book, I explain what the what the false prophet is so people can see it clearly and get above all of this nonsense and these prophecy teachers that Jesus said would deceive many and they'd follow them. These are the things we can't see as human beings, but God wants to make it real to his people. This is, this is what I do. I am a filmmaker and an author, but I'm, I, I don't claim to be any more than that. I, I don't have a title, nothing. I don't want a title. I think it would discredit me to have a title. I think so that this is, I got one of your uh, emails, and you're now having the deep state prophecy in the last Trump available for free. Did I get that right? At yes. Ken, yeah. The, I, Ken listen, this, this isn't this, this isn't time to make money. This this isn't a time to do anything but elevate and heal the body of Christ worldwide. So what, why why should I put money on this? Uh, I don't care. I don't care. I mean, I'm ready to go be with Jesus. I don't care about uh, uh, this world or Mammon. You know, you either serve Mammon or you serve God. I I I want to serve God. Now, money. I'm not saying money is evil. It's the love of money that's evil. So we do need funds to pay our rent and all that by groceries, but I don't care if I make a dime off this. I mean, I want people to see this so they can be enlightened. That's my reward. That's my reward. So if you go to KenKleinProductions.net and click on the image there of, of, the, of the image with the horn and the, uh, on the front part of it, it'll take you right to the video, and then you can begin to get healed of the misconceptions of the false prophets that are telling you this, that, and the other. And you can see for yourself. It's self-evident and obvious. And, and so, yeah, I want to invite everybody to get the free video at KenKleinProductions.net. That is totally awesome. And if you watch the free video, 
the deep state prophecies in the last Trump or the deep state prophecy in the last Trump, I should say, you're going to find you're going to find it amazing. You're going to be captivated and then treat yourself to the book itself. The deep state prophecy and the last Trump, the books, films and a lot going on are available at Ken Klein Productions dot net.